All right, folks. Here we go. Here we go. Settle down. Settle down. Now, next speaker. Again, it's day three. Next speaker here is the reigning number one pickup artist in the world. And yeah, he's also he also shows up as number three on some other lists. But I'll let him I'll let him talk to you about that. Uh, yeah, it's it's too bad you, you got married, man. You could really could have cashed in on that. Know, right? The number one thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Hey, I'm number one. I'm number one. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Once voted least likely to, to, girl, to get a girlfriend, now him and his lovely wife Amanda travel all around the world getting chicks, hot chicks, helping you guys out. So, uh, <laughs> so very good. Uh, enjoy him. He's a very loyal guy, great friend here to the 21 Convention. It's his third time speaking. So, uh, hey, it's a charm. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Lyons. Hey, guys. Thanks ever so much. I, thank you guys for everyone that got up this morning. I know there's like a whole bunch of people that are just like, now nah, fuck that, I'll just wait till the video comes out. I'm going to watch it then. Um, so I appreciate, appreciate all you guys coming out. Um, it's always a fun one. The 21 convention is one of my favorite, mostly because I really get on with, uh, with the organizers here. These guys in the PUA Summit, kind of like my two favorite places to go, because I really get on with the guys that organize it. And you guys get you know, a shitload of value. If you think about the kind of speakers that you come and get to listen to, and you're paying a fraction of a boot camp, it's kind of awesome. So just a quick round of applause for these guys, man, because they, they deserve this. They do this every year. OK. So yesterday, I was uh, sitting around, and I was chatting with DJ Fuji and Chris Orleans. Um, and it was so funny. We we're hanging around. I, I love these guys. If you don't know who Chris is, by the way, you guys really need to check him out. Chris Orleans, he's an awesome guy. Uh, I was talking to him yesterday. Um, do, take the time. Take the time to, to get to know him and DJ Fuji, both, both really good guys. I was sitting around, and they said to me, Adam, What's your business angle? Why do you, why do you come to these, these conferences and talk to people? You know, what's in it for you? And I was like, uh, I enjoy it. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, but wait, the money thing. You know, what do you? And I was like, no, I, I do it because I enjoy it. And, and I think they didn't really get it. I was like, look, I stay in a really nice hotel downtown. Me and my wife make a weekend of it. We normally go to Disneyland. Um, I was like, and this is what we do. We come out and we do it because we enjoy it, because we like helping you guys. And now I want to. I want to do a quick show of hands here for everybody that's in here. Do me a favor. Raise your hand if you've been doing this for five years or longer. It's not many. Not many of you. It's a few. And you guys, I was there. Everyone else, you guys, you guys don't remember what it was like. And I was looking back over when I first started, and I was thinking about how far things have come. I mean, for a start, none of you guys are wearing top hats. Not a single one of you anymore. Like, this is new for me. I remember my first ever, first ever convention. I turn up, everyone's wearing top None of you guys are. It's great. And like, you are now all pretty socially adjusted people. I mean, like, people are coming up to me and being like, hi, nice to meet you. You know, hey, you know, we met here or whatever. And you're talking to me. When I first did this, everyone was sort of like looking down at the floor. Not really talking. And if they did speak to you, it was like backwards over the shoulder. It was weird <laughs> shit. Everyone did. And, and you'd be kind of like, wow, that was awkward. I, you know, but that was, that was how they spoke. And I remember my first ever convention, I walked in, and the first thing I noticed was there was not a single girl around. I've seen like four girls this weekend. That's like 400% more than I've ever seen before. <laughs> so, like, there's a lot. There's a lot that's changed in the last five years. And I want to take those of you that don't know, I want to take you back. And I want to show you, first of all, where I came from. I want to give you an idea of what it was like to be me back when I first started. Now, there's, there's a book that I wrote out that, that some people have read and some people haven't that kind of gives you an idea of where my mind was. Because I was like you. I was like, I don't believe this shit works. Come on, man, watch. Dude's going to go up to a girl, and he ain't good looking, and he don't have any money, and he's going to talk to her. And then by asking random questions, he's going to end up in a thing. That's ridiculous. Never going to happen. And so I signed up to my first boot camp. I remember this. And I paid money to go and do it. And, um, and I'll take you guys back to the kind of advice we used to get to show you how much it's changed. You guys get really good advice now, like really good advice. My first ever boot camp, I want you to imagine that you've just forked over however much money a boot camp is currently. The, the prices have changed a bit, but whatever it is, they're big sums of money, right? And if you get, yeah, it's a lot of money you pay for this crap, right? So you pay a shitload of money, and I'm sitting there in this room, and this dude comes up on stage. Uh, it's a little stage. And he's like, so today I'm going to teach you the guaranteed line that is going to help you get every single girl. And I was like, I can't wait. Like, this is going to be great. And he goes, now I know some of you wear these big clown hats thinking that's going to help you pick up chicks. Well, let me tell you, there's something better. And I was like, I've got my pen and paper out. Like, I'm, I'm ready. I am. My first piece of advice, I'm ready. He pulls out a fireman's hat. And he's like, this. And I'm like, 
And I was trying to work out, do I write down Fireman's hat or do I draw a picture? I, wasn't, I didn't know where this was going to go. Was he going to do something with the hat? You know, he, I wasn't sure, so I just wrote, get Fireman's hat. Um, you know, and obviously I was planning on wearing it at my next convention, because that's what you do. And so the, the dude stand, he puts the Fireman's hat on, he goes, what you do is you run up to a group of girls that are standing around. In, in England, we have Leicester Square. You guys don't have Leicester Square. Leicester Square is like a very good practice place. It is a big square filled with about 2,000 tourists that just come in and out. So within 10 minutes, they will change. It's a new 2,000 tourists. So in terms of practicing game, it's great. You just stand there and just fail repeatedly, you know, for like a day, and then go back the next day and fail again until, until you go, oh, shit, you know, that didn't work. Um, so, so we're standing there, and then he goes, he puts the hat on, he goes, this is the line. He goes, is there a fire in there? And he goes, guaranteed, guaranteed, that pff, every time. That is the line, man, that is going to get you your results. And we wrote this down. Oh, it's brilliant stuff. No, I didn't, never thought of that. Never, never, ever, ever thought of that. And that's my point, right? This has changed. We were, that was back in the days when it was like RSD versus mystery method. Then it moved on to routines versus non-routines. Then it became natural game versus routine game. And then it became, what is it now, direct versus indirect, I think, is like the current thing. And there'll be another one, and you know, give it a year, next year we'll be, I don't know, be something like that, you know, being gay versus not being gay. I don't know, like there'll be something else, something else that I don't know about, that, and everyone will be like, this is how to do it. Um, but the point is, is, you know, now people are normal, people are, you know, socially calibrated. There's trends, you've got different groups of people. You know, gone are the days of the, uh, the shirt with the, no, the t-shirt with the blazer. That was my day, t-shirt, blazer. Now, the affliction days are here. There's a few of you, not going to hate, but there's a few of you guys, you know, the graphic t-shirts are in. Some of you got the skinny tie thing. I do the skinny tie thing. But, you know, times have changed. Times have moved on. We've got better at this. And it made me think back to, to those old days and what was so wrong about what we were doing. And I realized it's something that is still being done today. And, and in fact, I'm, I'm going to get to my point. It's, it's what I'm talking about today. We were uncalibrated. We... You don't do that. You don't wear a fireman's hat and walk out in the middle of a public place and scream at somebody in their face, is there a fire in here? You don't do that. Like, that isn't calibrated. That, that's not normal. And I realize this word calibrated is one that gets thrown around all the time. And I love it when, you, you can always tell the difference between pickup artists that really know what they're doing and pickup artists that you know, just want to make a load of money for picking up chicks. There's a difference between the two of them. And the difference is normally they can explain what they're talking about. And I love the ones, and I've definitely heard them where they're like, be calibrated. You need to be calibrated. Get more calibration. See what you're doing? That's not calibrated. You need to be calibrated. If you be more calibrated, oh, you'll be great. Everything you're doing is great. Just, you know, be more calibrated. What does that mean? What are you on about? Calibrate. I don't even know what that word, what, like, like I touch different points on the screen and it calculates where my mouse should be. Is that going to help me? Like, I don't know what calibration is. The, the first time I ever used calibration was with a Nintendo Lite game, and I was calibrating. It doesn't mean anything to me to picking up chicks, man. There's no connection to me. It doesn't help me. And so I realized that calibration is a massive issue still in the community. And it's something that today I'm hoping we can address a bit and give you guys a bit of perspective about what calibration is and why it's important and how to use it. So I've got to this point, um, Peter was nice enough to say, I, I got voted number one in the world on, on a whole bunch of lists. On a whole bunch of other lists, they wouldn't vote me number one in the world because I'm married, which I think is great. You know, you finally reach the apex, you're like, wow, all I've wanted to do is meet my ideal girl, settle down with her, meet this girl that I could never have gotten in a relationship with. You finally do it, and they go, congratulations, you can't be number one. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, yeah you're, you've reached the best you could ever be, but now nah, you're going to lose some points for that. So, it's, you know. Success, we don't, we don't really agree with that. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Was, obviously, a whole bunch of people did, and it was awesome to, to get there and to be at that position. And I'm now at a point where I get a lot of instructors, like a lot of people that, that teach you guys, and they're, they're ex-students of mine, and, and I see them quite a lot, and I kind of like mingle with them. And even those that aren't ex-students, I get a lot of other instructors phone me up, and they're like, hey, Adam, I've got a question. Can you help me out with this? And I think it's because I'm married now, because I've, you know, I've kind of reached that point. They've, they've heard of the success stories that I've had. They've seen what I've done. And they want to know about that next phase. What do you do next? You know, and that, that's the beautiful thing about the industry is we help each other. And I've got these two different stories that I wanted to share with you guys that other instructors have shown me recently. Um, and the first one is, uh, is from a guy I know incredibly well. He's a ridiculously good friend of mine. And he shows me this text interaction he's having with this chick. And he basically starts out going a bit direct and a bit sexual. I'm going to paraphrase here, but I'll give you an idea. 
his message was something along the lines of, it was, um, it was a, an online dating profile, and it went something like, tall, dark, sexy man, looking for girl who's up for no strings attached sex to reach her highest, deepest sexual fantasies. Something like that. It was like, it was out there, right? And then, and the message was like, only bother replying if you're a sexual creature. Only bother replying if you're somebody that wants to explore all your deepest, darkest sexual fantasies. And it went, went on all about this. And the reply, he got this reply from this girl, the only one that he really liked, which was, um, I'm definitely a sexual creature, but I've been hurt so many times in the past that I'm not up for a one-off encounter. I'm looking for somebody who can bring me to those heights, show me all those things, but who, who is up for something a bit more long-term. So he starts replying, and anyway, after a while, they get into this conversation, and he's, he's gaming her pretty well. The conversation's going well. And then he shows me this message where she's like, I've been hurt really bad in the past, and I'm worried that maybe you're only up for sex, and I need somebody who's got more to them than that. I need somebody who's got some kind of emotional content. And he shows me this reply that he's thinking about sending. And the reply is, tell me what the most sexual thing is you like doing. Because I would like to rub cream all over your body and then lick it off while tasting strawberries off your nipples. And it's like this, and it, I mean, it goes on. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave out the bit about the cucumber, whatever. But, and I was like, dude, I think you've, uh, you've missed something here. And he's like, what? I was like, she isn't, she's already said she likes sex. That's going to happen. She's worried you only think about sex. And your message pretty much describes the bad plot to a Swedish porn movie. I was like, there's a, you got a problem, dude. Like, there's, you're not calibrated here, man. Like, something's wrong. And the other story I want to tell you is one that I got told the other day about about why an instructor was, who was looking at following somebody's style of game and was trying to work out the angle. And it was a, a conversation, a text conversation, where this girl's like, um, I really want to fuck you. I want to take you to bed. I want to show you what it means to be a man and to completely dominate me in every way sexually. And the guy replied, well, I can't wait to set some candles up to set up the mood. And I'm going to play a little bit of Barry White. And then I'm going to slowly massage you. And then her message is like, just fuck me hard. And he's like, just wait, baby, because first of all, and it was like, dude, come on, like, girl needs to get fucked. Like, she's saying it. Like, she ain't even hinting. She's like, fuck me now. And he's like, wait, I want to show you how sensual I can be. I'm a, I'm a lover, not a fucker. I, I don't know, right? And, and I was like, man, it ain't calibrated. And I love listening to all this, go direct, go indirect. No, no, be calibrated. I, but there I was, I was saying the same thing that all these guys are saying to you without telling you, how the fuck you be calibrated? What is be calibrated, man? And I'm like, no, be calibrated. And it was Amanda that actually said it to me the other day. We're just walking down the road. You've got to imagine what it's like in, in my life, right? I'm, I'm a married man, I've got a house, I've got two little kittens, and like, we go out and we're doing our shopping, and we're walking through you know, our local food shopping market, Whole Foods, whatever. We're walking through, and my wife suddenly says, uh, you know, calibrated is responding to the actual moment and the interactions within that moment, rather than carrying on a predisposed course that you've already got in your head that doesn't necessarily translate or relate to that current situation. And I was like, so I was thinking, wait, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that, that's what uh, calibration is. And I was like, well, that's genius. That, that, that is what calibration is. I was like, but why, why are we discussing that over Whole Foods? And she goes, I just popped in my head. That's what, that's what my life is like. That's kind of like how our life translates. And then I thought, well, that's... That's great, that, that's all well and good, okay? So basically what we're looking at is try and respond to things that are active, things that are happening right now in the conversation between you and her, rather than following any kind of pre-scripted notion of what should happen. For example, if you're like, I'm definitely gonna go sexually direct with this girl, nothing is gonna stop me from going sexually direct with this girl, this is what's gonna happen, and then you go over and meet her, and you get talking to her, and she's like, yeah, um, so my boyfriend just dumped me by cheating on me with somebody else, and then he tried to force rape me. Like, you don't want to go sexual at that moment. Like, that, that, is not, that ain't going to help you, yeah? It, it's, it, it's not calibrated. But there are people that do that. They, they ignore this, and they're just like, I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. But that doesn't mean there isn't a point or a time when you should be sexual, you know? It's just about being a bit clever about it. And so from this, I wanted to start analyzing this a bit further. And I started looking at some of the psychological studies into what makes people um, relax, or how to act in different situations, what makes them 
realize how they should behave in different situations. And the study that, that most stuck out in my head was one by a guy by the name of Chris Bale in the University of Lancashire. And they were studying into pickup lines. How awesome is that? Real psychologists looking at pickup lines. Uh, you know, I'm sure they didn't stand out in the middle of the street for five years in the freezing cold, getting rained on, like some people, and put it to practice. But still, the studies themselves are fascinating. And I think what's the most fascinating for me isn't really the result of his study. The result of his study was good, but I like all the additional information they created while they were trying to get these results. For example, some of the side effects of this study. They realized that women are actually attracted to four different categories of guy. Now, before we go into this, I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you guys to be very honest with me, and I want you to raise your hand if, before studying this, you actually managed to make out with a chick. Before studying this, raise your hand. Wow, look at that. So this guy's like, maybe, maybe. Well, I don't know, possibly. I, I feel you, I feel you. I'm, I'm assuming it's a possibly about whether it was before or after, not whether she was a girl or not. That's my assumption. I'm not, yeah, he's like, well, did it count? I'm not sure, it was Thailand, it's a crazy time, I don't know. Anyway, whatever, I'm joking. Okay. So the point is, I love this. People are like, uh, yeah, I need to learn how to pick up chicks. You all picked up chicks before. Why do you need to? Other people can do it. You did it. You didn't need this. What's the difference? Why? How? How did you do this? This is an interesting point. And to talk about this before I go into that study, I want to explain about one of my favorite students recently. I met this guy, and he worked for NASA. Okay? Now, that gives you an instant stereotype, which I really like being in your head, because that, your stereotype of what you imagine a guy who works like NASA, if you multiply that by 10, you'll get an idea of what this guy was like. He was pretty much exactly what you would think. Hello. He was that. That's what he was. He was that kind of guy. And we had him on this course, and he was brought there by ex-students of ours. And they're like, this guy has already been to a whole bunch of boot camps, and no one can make him good. Help him. And we get a lot of these. I'd say the majority of my students are actually students that have done something else elsewhere, are like, I'm not getting the results I want. I want to get good at this. And then they come to me because they're like, OK, now I'm going to go with number one in the world and see what he does. And, and I like that. We get, to, we get to help these guys out. And this was a really good case in point. This guy turned up. Um, he's overweight. He's awkward. Uh, not really an extrovert. Actually, he was a massive introvert. And he's not really the kind of person that takes well to training. Didn't really want to do anything, you know. But, you know, he wanted to get good. He wanted to make it happen. And um, it was actually Amanda that, that took him out. And she was trying to make him comfortable. And we're in this venue. And in this venue is a pool table. Pool, that's what you guys call it, right? It's like pool, OK, pool table. I wasn't sure, billiards, pool, snooker, something, whatever. It was, you got sticks, little balls on the table. You whack the sticks in the corner. It's one of those games, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about. Pool. And uh, she goes, you know, um, I want you to try and imagine you're in a comfortable place. Where are you most comfortable? And he goes, oh, in a, in a pool hall. That's where I'm the most comfortable. And Amanda goes, well, great. There's a pool table at the back of the room. Let's go and hang around there. And so we hang around there. Oh, the, Amanda and the student hang around there. And, um, and he's like, she's like, why do you feel comfortable around a pool table? And he's like, oh, I used to be a junior pool champion. And Amanda's like, really? Let's play a game. So they start playing pool. Sure enough, he changes. He's not quiet anymore. He's in his environment. He's loud, and he's extrovert, and he's talking about Paul, and he's explaining what to do. Well, this big group of girls, they're overhearing. They start listening in. And they're like, well, what's going on? And he starts challenging people. And then you've got these big dudes who are like, I'll beat you at Paul. And he's just like, in. Like, dun, dun, and all the balls are dropping in the thing. And he just looks great. And all these women are like, oh my god, you're so awesome, NASA guy. And they're flinging themselves all over him. And like, he's got like eight chicks around him. And the other instructors on our course walk in, and they're like, huh? How'd you do that? And the students that brought him were like, who is this guy? What have you done to him? And all we did was we put him in the one place where he's already attractive. It's like you guys. You don't know this yet, and we're going to analyze it, but in the times when you picked up chicks, you were already attractive. You already had that. You didn't need any of this shit. You didn't need to become uncalibrated and learn all this other stuff. You already had a position, a point where you were attractive. It's great in America. In England, we don't really have family things. Like, English people, we have like TV dinners, or we go out separately. We don't... You have Thanksgiving. It's like the time where you all come. To, we don't have that. We don't all hang around and kill a turkey. This is your guys' thing. But it's good, right? Because it builds this, this family foundation. 
I want you to think back. Every time you go to Thanksgiving, I bet you're not quiet. I bet you're not awkward. I bet you're not running out of conversation. I bet you're actually probably, I bet your mum's probably like, oh, he's the life and soul of the party. I bet that's exactly what it is because you know how to act at home. It's your comfortable environment. If you met a chick in your house, it'd be easy. It wouldn't even be a problem because it's your environment. You know what you're talking about. You know the in-jokes. You're showing them around your house. You're, you're the one in charge. Well, for this dude, the pool table, that was for him. He, he literally, to give you an idea of just how good this guy got, he got so good that I tried to schedule a phone chat with him that I could record to send out to my mailing list because he literally, I mean, like, lost his virginity soon after. I mean, it was, it was crazy. The guy just went through the roof. He didn't have time to schedule me into his diary. And I was like, fuck you, dude. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, I hooked you up. Give me the review. Like, and he's like, man, no, I want it. I'm just so busy. We've got so many chicks here, blah, 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 blah. I was like, I hate you. Like, I was like, you're horrible. But, you know, he, he got really good. That's the point. And that, that's what he's there to do. And the students that brought him, they now bring me all these reject students that can't get any. It's great. Like, they, they help me out. But, so the point is, he was already attractive. And we're going to deal with that in a second, because now we're going to come back to this study. And what they did is they asked women to identify the kind of person that is the most attractive. Who is you, Mrs. Girl, your ideal man? Categorize him. And they came up with four categories of men. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you guys out. We're going to make this a bit more interactive. And I want somebody to raise their hand who thinks they know one of the categories. Something women said was a good style of, uh, of person. Okay, this guy here. Oh, I get to make Peter run. I didn't know that would have that effect. Now I'm going to do this more often. Okay. <laughs> Probably the uh, bad boy dangerous type. Okay, there we go. One, that's one of them. One of the four is the bad boy dangerous type. Okay, this guy here. What have you got? Go for it. The suave James Bond type. No, not at all. Didn't even come up. Wow. So sad, I know. Wasn't there. Not one of the types. Go for it. it good try. I would have guessed it. The nerdy dorky guys. He, no, no, no. But close. Okay, we're going to give you close. We're going to give you close. All right, wait, wait, wait. Ready? The nice guy. Okay, the nice guy was one of them. Somebody who looks after the girl who's kind and caring, the nice guy. I'll count that as needy dorky. Nice guy, okay? So we've got the bad boy, the nice guy. Two more, come on, somebody. This guy, he's a ninja, you can't see him, but he can speak. The social guy. Social guy, no, didn't come up. Um, well, well, the leader came up, okay? So the leader came up, that'll count, social guy. The leader, it's not just somebody who's social, specifically a leader, somebody who told people what to do. Okay, the leader was one. So yeah, that counts, that counts, I'll let you off with that one. Last guy, come on, guys. Last guy, this is funny. This is going to get really funny if you don't know this one. The creep? The creep, yes, no. <laughs> it's, good, it's a good guess. No, okay, no problem. Okay, the fourth, fourth and final guy was the provider, okay? Now, it's not surprising that pickup artists don't get this one, okay? Because we are trained not to think providers are attractive, okay? That is like, like provider, pff, he ain't attractive. He's a douche. He just spends money and gets girls. <laughs> It's not game. Yeah, but unfortunately, he is attractive. Okay, like it does work. So there are your four categories. I was being a bit stingy with you guys. You, you, you got it. It was the bad boy, the nice guy, the leader, and the provider. In this study of all these girls, they were the four characters that all men pretty much fit into. Yeah? And you can see how they kind of fit. Like the, the dorky guy, he kind of fits into the nice guy category. The social guy, he fits into the leader category. The creep doesn't really fit in anywhere. But, you know, it was a good, hey, it was a good guess. I'm not going to hate on you for it, apart from now. That's it. Um, so they're the four categories of guy. Now, what's fascinating is, let's have a look in the room. Let's work out which ones you guys would see yourselves as. So I want you to have a deep think for a second. I want you to think, are you a leader? Are you a nice guy? Are you a bad guy or are you a provider? You know, have, a, have a good think about which one of these you are. We're going to do a, we'll do a show of hands, or we can make Peter run around to every... No, we'll do a show of hands. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so first of all, I want to see... Everyone who thinks they're a bad boy, raise your hand. Are you somebody who's a little bit... Yeah, there we go. There's a few of you guys. There's a few. Not many. There's a few. A bit sexually deviant. The bad boy is described as someone who takes risks, okay? He's a crazy kind of guy. He does things... He's like, fuck it. I'm just going to do it. He's the kind of guy, fuck it, I'm going to throw the table over. He just does it. Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't care what anyone else thinks. You know, repercussions are for other people to deal with. That's the bad boy. He's just going to, you know, I'm going to fuck her today. And then if she gets pregnant, somebody else's problem. Like, that's the bad, I'm joking. So, that's the, it's the bad boy attitude, yeah? It's like, that, that's how they think. It's like, we'll deal with the repercussions later. Basically, what he does is he makes crazy decisions. He makes decisions that aren't necessarily based on pre-planning or thought. He's just like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. He's a dangerous guy. Okay, it's nice. Okay, next up, we've got the nice guy. Raise your hand if you think you're a nice guy. It's the majority of the room. I'm not surprised. The nice guy is the guy who most pickup artists, this is the reason that they come and do this, right? We were the nice guy. We got screwed over. It's not that you couldn't get girls. 
You could get goals. It's just you're tired of the nice guy finishing last, right? But the nice guy doesn't finish last, actually, because that's how up till now you've all got goals, by being a nice guy. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. We're going to analyze that a bit further. The nice guy, he's nice. He's just caring. He looks after the girl, puts her on a pedestal, looks after her. He's nice. There are, there are women that think that is the most attractive category of man, and we're going to... We're going to deal with that in a second. Next up, the social guy or the leader, as the, uh, the ninja pointed out. Okay, who thinks you're a, a leader, social guy? Again, small, small amounts of you, but still there's a few of you that think that. Yeah, the leader, he's attractive, right? He's the guy calling the shots. He's like, this is what is going to happen because I say so. I'm in charge. I'm the leader. This is, this is it. And, you know, he's making those decisions so people follow him. And the provider, raise your hand if you think you're a provider. No one, again, uh, maybe, maybe one guy possibly. Yeah, again, not surprised because no one really identified themselves or, or said that that was an attractive quality. I'm not surprised because we're in a pickup community. You know, if you were a provider and you were paying money out to pick up chicks, you probably wouldn't be here because you'd just be paying for chicks. Like that would, well, you'd go out and drop a load of money and have, I'm not saying that works every time and we're going we're gonna to analyze that and we're going to talk about that in a second. But you know, the provider is another one of those categories. So there are the four categories. If you didn't raise your hand, if you're watching this and you're thinking, hmm, that doesn't sound like me, you probably don't get that good results. And that's actually, we, we tested this in the last talk that I did, that's actually correlated. The people that didn't put up their hand at all were like, yeah, it sucks, I, I don't get it. That's because they're the four categories of men that women are attracted to. Now what's really fascinating, and I'm going to put in a pause here by drinking this water, it's like suspense. You can put like an advert in here. Okay, what's really fascinating is the fact that they also identified different types of women by using ISENC's pen model personality test. This is a test that identifies what kind of person you are. And it breaks people down into three categories. It analyzes three different components of a personality. It analyzes whether they're extroverted. And what we mean by extroverted is somebody who, they go out there, they're social, they like interacting with other people. Um, it's a, so, you, you, extrovert, they go out, they enjoy interacting with people, you guys know what that is. They analyze whether they're neurotic, and by neurotic, we're not talking about somebody that's like completely freaking out all the time, is on pills, we're just talking about somebody who's, you know, a little bit depressive, you know. The, the cup, it's always, it's always half empty, and there's a crack in the glass. You know, it's like, it's not perfect. Not, nothing's great. Like, it's not like, oh, it's half full, or at least I have a glass. It's, you know, eh, everything's a bit, mm, nothing's great. Neurotic. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's awesome. Bad stuff happens to me. And then the P in the PEN is psychotic. Now, I need to be really careful here. By psychotic, we're not describing the kind of girl that chases you around with an axe after you break up with her, okay? It's just somebody who makes emotional decisions rather than logical ones. It's somebody who, you know, they're going to make a decision right now that seems like it's a good idea and screw the repercussions. Yeah? It's like, I'm going to make a decision on a whim based on my emotions and how I feel right now. Crazy decisions that don't really make sense. And they analyze these, these three, uh, they analyze women and put them into one of these three different categories. Now here's the real kicker. Every single person who scores highly in one of those particular categories has a specific favorite. And there is an incredibly high correlation between these two facts. Do you guys understand just how important that is for us? When, you're turn, when we're talking about learning calibration, I'm telling you that there is a psychological profile that you can make a female do that will tell you what type of girl she is. And if she's a certain type of girl, it will also tell you the kind of guy that she wants. This is massive, okay? In terms of calibration, this is literally a roadmap to identify the personality type of a girl, and then you can understand how you should be acting to pick her up. And if you use the wrong one, you are not going to be her ideal guy. As we talk about this, you guys are going to start realizing that, wow, that happened to me before, and the kind of girls that I hook up with have been mostly like that. So. Let's analyze these and let's, uh, let's see if we can have a guess. Let's get Peter running again because he, he likes running around the room. And let's analyze what you guys think. So let's start with um, the extrovert. 
The extrovert girl, she's a bit of a party animal. She likes going out. She's got some good friends she likes hanging out with. She's out there. She's not a shy person. Who's her ideal guy? Somebody raise their hands. Somebody who thinks they know. This guy in the front. This guy. Okay. Um, go for it. It's, it's got to be the nice guy. It's not the nice guy. You sure? It's, I'm very sure it's not the nice guy. Somebody else. Somebody else. Um, this guy here, because he's close to him, so you don't have to run. The leader. The leader. Yes, it's the leader. Okay, now let, let's look at that. Why does the, uh, the, the extrovert, why is she attracted to the leader? She wants to go out. She wants to have a fun time. She wants to socialize. Someone's got to enable that to happen. Somebody's got to be like, hey, you know what? Let's not sit in tonight. Let's go out. If he doesn't take charge and take her out, she'll sit indoors, and then she's going to be unhappy. She's not going out and interacting with people. She's not having fun. She's going to start getting unhappy in the relationship. And the other people aren't necessarily going to suggest that because that's not their natural kind of thing to do. The leader is. The leader's going to make decisions. He's going to be like, let's go and do this. Let's go and do that. If they're going to stay in, the leader's like, let's stay in, and this is what we're going to do. He's always in charge, and the extrovert likes that because he enables her to go out and fulfill what she wants to do. Yeah? And like, uh, like this guy said, the, the ninja, and the leader's probably social as well. So that social aspect is warming very nicely to the extroversion. So... Okay, so next up, let's look at the neurotic. A little bit depressive, life kind of sucks, nothing's great. Raise your hands if you think you know. This guy over here. He's got everyone right so far, I've been watching his head. The nice guy? The nice guy, exactly, he's good, this guy nice. The nice guy, think about it. My life sucks, nothing's great, my job's horrible. But this guy's great, he's so perfect, he treats me really well. That's what it is, the nice guy. She wants a nice guy, all you nice guys. I bet if you look back over the girl, I bet she was, yeah, kind of nice, but you know, she kind of moaned a lot, kind of nagged a lot. She, you had a neurotic. Most of you probably found that situation. She likes nice guys. She wants someone that's gonna look after her. That's the whole point. The neurotic needs a nice guy to look after her. And she wants that. We're gonna analyze that a bit further a bit later on. Okay, the psychotic. What does she want? This guy's got the answer. Do you want to run down just... Go for it. By experience. By experience, says the bad boy. She likes the bad boy. She likes the bad boy. The psychotic girl likes the bad boy. Exactly. Well done. Thank you very much. Guys, round of applause for yourselves, first of all. Well done. Good. Okay. She likes the bad boy. You know why she likes the bad boy? Because she's emotional. She's like, I just want to do something really crazy right now. And the bad boy's like, well, let's do it. Like, that's how they work. Like, he's just like... Fuck it, let's just do this. Let's see what happens, okay? And that's it. The bad boy and the psychotic go so well together. Who's missing? The provider, the provider ain't there. You know why? Because he comes second. When you add it all up, he ain't nobody's number one. He's everyone's number two. Everyone's like, yes, a provider is attractive. But given a choice between a provider and a leader, I will choose the leader. Given a choice between a provider and a nice guy, I will choose the nice guy. He, he's everyone's second choice. That's why there's no point trying to learn how to be a provider and pick up. Because you're only going to be second best. That's why all those rich dudes you see in the nightclub get annoyed when a pickup artist moves in and takes his chick. He doesn't actually have that much control. He's their second choice. Now, if a neurotic can't find a nice guy, she doesn't want a bad boy. And she definitely doesn't want a leader telling her around and bossing her what to do, but she'll take a provider. You know, ah, he's not the ideal guy, but fuck it, he's got a really nice car. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. So now we've analyzed that, we can learn about the kind of person that you want to be. You might not need game. You might be sitting at this whole conference, might have been an awesome time because you get to hang out with some great people, but ultimately largely a waste of time. Because if your ideal girl isn't a psychotic and you're a bad boy, you know where you're going wrong. And anyone that's like, oh, just be sexual. Just uh, keep telling them you're going to fuck her up the bum. She'll love that. Well, yeah, that will get you a lot more psychotics. That is what's going to happen. Test it. Go to a strip club. See the kind of guys the girls like. There are two types of strippers. There's the depressive strippers that are like, oh, I've got to do something to feed my baby and pay for my degree. And you've got the other strippers that are just like, I just like being naked. You've got two types, right? <laughs> Neurotic, psychotic. Work out which kind of girl you like. If you like the neurotic, be a nice guy, you'll sleep with that kind of stripper. Tell the psychotic girl you want to fuck her up the butt, you'll sleep with that type of stripper. That's how this works. It's obvious when you think about it. So you're sitting here learning game, but I bet you didn't even think about the kind of girl you want to get. I know you're all thinking, I want a normal girl. Yeah, ain't gonna happen. All right? Ain't no such thing. Trust me, I've been there. Yeah? She's one of these types. Primarily, she'll have a, a preference towards one. So start thinking about the kind of girl you want to get. Don't just think, oh yeah, I want to learn to pick up chicks in general. 
that makes you weird, like me. That was my problem. I was like, well, I don't just want one girl. I want all of them. And that's what made me a weird pickup guy. I was like, I'm going to stand out in the street and practice on every single type of girl until I worked it out. And now what's funny is I had something like this in my head. My model is a lot more complicated and doesn't really make sense when I teach it because it was in my head. It was my personal calibration of how I interact with, with girls and the different types and how I change my game depending on who I'm talking to. But this is a model that makes a lot of sense, probably because it was made by real psychologists who know what they're talking about. And it's translate which something you guys can look at. You can look at the style of game that you want based on the kind of girl you want. If you're thinking, you know what, as a fuck buddy, I want a psychotic chick, then you need to start being a bad boy. It's a no-brainer. You're going to have to start acting like that. If you're thinking, I want a girl to settle down with and I want it to be fun and sociable and get on with my mum, you probably want an extrovert. You probably need to focus more on the leadership social kind of thing. And if you're thinking, I want a really psychotic chick who's completely crazy, you need to move to the bad boy thing. You know, like, and that's how it works. When I first came out into the game, I was like, be a leader, be social, build interactions with loads of women. But I realized all that did was teach you how to be like me to get the kind of girls I wanted, which was an extrovert. Now, what's absolutely fascinating is I met my wife through social interactions. I met her when I was a leader of a shitload of women and a whole load of dudes that were all interacting with girls. So randomly to test this, in a case study of one, I got my wife to do the PEN personality test. Guess what? She's an extrovert. No surprises there. It conformed 100% to everything that I theorized and that I'd done from my own game. It was obvious. Ultimately, that's what it takes to do it. So you've got to work out what kind of girl do you want. Then you can work out what type of game you want. Otherwise, all that's going to happen is you're going to end up following some pickup artist who's going to be teaching you how to get the kind of girls he wants. And I know a lot of pickup artists. And I know the kind of girls they want. You do not want to introduce them to your mum. You don't. Not they're the wrong kind, yeah? Like, so think about it and analyze it and work out the type of girl you want. And then you can start piecing together that personality type. But now wait, there's more to this. We're only looking at one end of the spectrum here. We're looking at what they like. How about we go the other way? What about they don't like? Because the girls got asked that too. They got asked to categorize, actually in a different study, but same paper. They got asked to categorize what about people they found unattractive? Two qualities. The most unattractive qualities in a male. Now, you'd think you should know this, right? In my experience from doing these talks, no one knows. It's a bad sign. So let's, let's, I've preempted it. Let's see if any of you know. Raise your hand if you're brave enough to guess. This guy. Whoa. All right, all right, everyone's brave enough. We'll start with this guy here. Oh, no, wait, you've done one. We'll start with this guy here. With, yeah, you. Go for it. Uh, I'd say neediness. Neediness. No, and that's what everyone says. Didn't even come up. Wasn't even a, a point on there. Two things. That's because you're a pickup artist. That's why. It's, it's us. It's in the community. We get a warped sense of things. That's why. Go for it. This guy here, he got the last one right. Lazy. Lazy. No. Not even a quality. Think about how many women you know with lazy guys. It's not a quality. They don't care about it, right? Come on, guys. You have to go for it. This guy. Lack of confidence. No. Not even in that. I told you. This is bad. You're the final one. If you don't get this, I'm going to destroy all. Go for it. Insecure. Not insecure. Hygiene. Washing. Deodorant. Shampooing, get clean. Guys, come on. <laughs> the worst possible thing, a dude that stinks, he's sweaty, he smells. That's the worst. She's like, no way. And that's the thing about pickup artists. I go to these conventions. You guys are pretty okay. People smell. They do. I've seen them. And they come up to me and they've got a, their hairs mopped over the top of their bald head. They've got greasy skin. Their clothes haven't been washed because they've been traveling to pick up convention to pick up convention. They turn up and they go, oh yeah, lack of neediness. That's the most unattractive thing. I'm like, fuck you, dude, it's your smell. That's the worst. <laughs> Trust me. I know. <laughs> smell is bad, yeah? Hygiene, guys. Number one, if you have a lack of hygiene, if you do not look after yourself, that is <laughs> number one. Number two was none of the things you guys mentioned. Number, let's, let's look at this. Let's analyze. Let's analyze some of the best pickup artists in the world, some people that I really respect, okay? Neil Strauss, a lot of respect for the guy. I think he's great. Sin, John, I think he's a great guy. Both of them, I rate both of those two as incredibly good pickup artists. You know what else they also both do? Stand up comedy. A lot of people don't know this. I once did a stint at stand up comedy. Whenever I spot a whole bunch of people that I think are really good at game, it doesn't take long to realize that they're really funny. Because a lack of a sense of humor is a very unattractive thing. I get so many people that are like, uh, 
they're like, yeah, so uh, I spoke to this girl, and she, uh, she, didn't, uh, she didn't respond very well to me when I spoke to her. I don't know why. I was like, dude, it's because you never smile, ever. Like, ever. And he's just like, uh, yeah, well, uh, does, that, does it matter? I'm like, yeah, it matters. You have to smile. There's a whole bunch of people have this joke that Dream doesn't smile, right? The guy that runs the 21 convention. <laughs> I'm going to say this right now. Dream smiles, okay? Right now he's smiling. At the convention, at the dinner last night we hung out, he was smiling. The dude does smile. He's actually incredibly funny and incredibly witty when he smiles. It's just when he's stressed organizing a big convention, he ain't smiling so much. I don't blame him because he hasn't slept in two days, okay? <laughs> smiling, powerful. You smile, it shows you've got a sense of humor. If you don't smile, don't be surprised when girls don't smile back at you. That's all I'm saying. Yeah? They're the two most unattractive qualities. The most unattractive. Everybody who's watched this video, everyone knows anything about pickup. That is it. It's the official. None of this neediness is the worst. No, it's not. Neediness is like third worst, maybe. But it is not number one. Number one is hygiene. Wash. Okay? Brush your teeth. Do these things. So, okay. Now, each of these guys that are the ideal person, the ideal characters, they have flaws that are typically associated with them. And these flaws are not considered attractive. So we're going to analyze these now. So let's start with the nice guy. The nice guy's flaw, this guy knows it, the nice guy's flaw is he's needy. Okay? He's a needy guy. That's a typical flaw. It doesn't mean he always has that flaw. It just means most nice guys are also needy. That's why they're nice guys. They're like, shit, I can't get another girl. I need to be really, really nice to this one so I don't lose her. So neediness is a negative quality. It's just not the worst. Okay? So the nice guy, that's his not bad quality. The leader, he's too bossy. The leader tells her what to do in bad situations. You know, she's like, I don't want to do that. And he's like, you have to do that. That's what we're doing. I'm a leader. I am in charge. This is what we do. The leader, he tells people what to do. Okay? So very important thing to know that that is a negative quality. Next up, the bad boy. The bad boy's negative quality. Oh, he, yeah, he's, he's a bad boy, right? He's, he's not very nice, OK? So you got the difference between, um, actually, we'll analyze these in a second. I'll go through these in a second. Fourth, the last one, the provider. The provider's bad quality. He's trying to make up stuff by just spending. There's no real connection there. He's just, you know, all he's got is his money, really. And they're the typical negative situations that are associated with each of the types. Now, what you guys have to realize is most girls don't know they're dealing with pickup artists, okay? The average dude out there, when they meet a bad boy, it's not a bad boy that's like, I'm a calculated bad boy. No, it's not. He's just a bad boy. He takes crazy emotional decisions, and he's an asshole. He has both the things attached. But because he's her ideal girl, a psychotic will put up with the negative issues associated with it to get it. For example, a neurotic, right? Her life sucks, nothing's great. I'm not saying it's like the end of the world, but you know, she's not got the perfect life, and she meets this really nice guy. He doesn't boss her around too much, like the leader, or force her to go to social situations she doesn't want to go to. He doesn't try and buy her love. He genuinely likes her, and he's not bad for her. So the nice guy is a nice guy. He's a bit needy. She's like, yeah, he's a bit needy, but whatever, I like it. You know, that, that keeps him to me. You know, it means he's not going to stray. See what I'm saying? So she will put up with that negative quality. In the same way, a psychotic girl, she's going to look at a bad boy and she's going to be like, uh, yeah, you know, I like him. He's crazy. He's dangerous. He's got a motorbike. I mean, yeah, you know, he treats me really bad, but, you know, whatever. I mean, like, he'll change. Yeah? And that's what I'm talking about. She puts up with the negative part of it. And the provider, she's like, yeah, I mean, you know, there's no emotional content. I'm not physically attracted to him and huh, hope we never, ever have to have sex. But, I mean, have you seen the car he drives? Yeah? So... Every single one of these has a negative characteristic that the girl will put up with. If you don't believe me, just look at the news and look at the really, you know, Donald Trump. Look at him. Like, look at him. Like, you know, like, his wife. Like, look at him. Uh, as I'm talking about, like, you can see this. They, they ignore a whole bunch of other stuff to get what they want. Now, the beautiful thing about being you gentlemen here in this room is you don't have to have the negative with the positive. We're social artists. We can choose. We, we're here because we're all about self-help. We're about improving ourselves. Why be the bad with the good? Why not just be the good with the good? Drop the bad. So let's look at this. Let's, let's, start, let's start with the nice guy. You can be a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I, I take girls out. I'll, I'll buy them things. I'll, I'll buy the first round of drinks for a group of girls. I'll be a really nice guy. Give them compliments. But I'm not going to be needy. If she starts giving me shit or if she starts wanting to go out with her friends, she can go out with her friends. I'm going to hang out with other girls. She's going to get jealous. 
because so many women like me and she's going to come back after me. I don't need to be needy. I've got abundance. Being a nice guy with abundance is powerful. All the positives, none of the negatives. The leader, he makes decisions on what to do. Hey, you know what, honey? We haven't been out for ages. Let's go here and do this. Oh my God, that's a great idea. Cool. It's like uh, my wife the other day. Like, I, I, I am a leader. That's like my natural tendency. And I was thinking, I haven't been on a date with my wife for a while. We travel a lot with work, but we haven't been on a date. So randomly, I booked some tickets for this show. Didn't tell her about it. I'm like, hey, don't have any plans tonight. We're going out. She loved it. She got to go out. We went to a really, really bad comedy house in the middle of Austin. But you know, that was all there was to do. But I did it. And I led. And we had a great night out. We had a really good date night. Because that's what I do, I'm a leader, the positive. I'm not bossy, I'm not like, you have to do it. You know, if she didn't want to do it, we wouldn't have done it. If she went out and she didn't enjoy it, we'd have left, we'd have done something else. I'm not forcing her to do things because I want to do them. I'm trying to come up with lead, I'm trying to lead her into things that she wants to do, yeah? The bad boy. Every girl's image of the bad boy. It's the motorbike, it's the tattoos. <clears throat> but the image is not of the guy getting on the bike and wheel spinning the mud in her face and laughing. That is not it, yeah? It's not the nasty side effect of it. It's not like, quiet! It's not that. It's, it's the guy spins the bike and he's like, hop on. And she gets on the bike with him and they go. But that gesture of helping her up on the bike, that's a nice guy thing to do, right? He ain't just a bad boy. He's not a bad boy that treats girls nasty. He's a bad boy that treats the girl well. He's a nice guy and a bad boy. And here we get into the real crux of this. Now some of you guys, you might have an ideal type. You might want a psychotic. And if so, you know how to act together. Some of you might be like me. Some of you might think, I want open options. I want to be able to get different types of girls. And let's not even ignore the fact that once a month, your girl does a Jekyll and Hyde on you and becomes someone else. So it's good to be able to like shift and you know, potentially possess a number of different qualities that you might want to use. Over time, people change. When you first meet a girl and she's single, she might be an extrovert. When you get in a relationship with her, you might now have found you're in a relationship with a neurotic. Are you suddenly not going to have her? Or are you just going to understand how to act when you deal with a neurotic and shift and keep the girl? Or at least understand what's going on so you can make the decision, fuck, I'm going to be with a neurotic for the rest of my life. I don't want that. I want to get back to my extrovert. You know, I want to, I want to make the shift. Understanding this this knowledge I'm giving you guys lets you understand how to act, what to do. You could be everything. You don't have to choose one. You can literally analyze this and think, all right, what is the correct way that I should be to be able to pick up all of them? And that's what we're going to look at next. So now let's look at these kind of characteristics. What we're looking at now is building an attractive profile. We're moving away from the passive kind of game stuff where it's like, yeah, I'm a nice guy. I accept I want neurotics. I'm going to stay being that. Now you're talking about controlling it. Now you're like, no, I'm going to build a profile of an attractive person. When I first started teaching this, I was scared. I'm going to tell you guys this. I was very scared. I've known about this in my head for years. But I've never taught it because the way it was in my head wasn't in a way that I could teach. And I was scared. I was scared of coming out in the community and saying to you, Yes, I'm going to change you. You know why? Because so many of you were saying to me, well, I don't want to change who I am. And I listened to that. And I was like, fuck. I, I don't want to make them think I'm changing them. Because, you know, yeah, they should be able to be themselves. And then I realized I came number one in the world. I was like, no, fuck you. I know better. Change. I did. Don't be you. Be someone else. Be someone better than you. Unless you're happy with what you've got. If you are happy with what you've got, be you. Because that's who you are and that's what you get. I look at myself and my game, I know what I'm supposed to get. I was supposed to get a girl about that high, probably Asian, she likes comic books, she has a little bit of extra weight on her, but you know, we play video games together and we hang out. That was, I know that's what I was supposed to get, because that's all I ever got. They were my girls back in the day when I first started this, that was all I could pick up. And I was like, cool. And she'd have been cute because she was exotic and people go, wow man, she's pretty hot. But you know, she'd always been pretty hot. Right now, I'm dating a girl who's just as tall as me in high heels, and when she walks in a room, everyone's like, wow, what the fuck? I'm not supposed to date a girl like that. That's new to me. That's because I changed. I became someone different. I'm telling you, if you are happy with what you have, stay the same. If you want the same results as another pickup artist, follow them. If you're looking at a pickup artist that teaches this, and he's single, and he's running around and picking up strippers every so often, 
That's what you're going to get if you follow him. Go for that. If you're thinking, I want to meet a guy who settles down in relationships, then follow a guy who does that. But if you want to be able to get every single freaking woman on the planet, and you want to understand how to change your game, then you have to be like water. You have to shift depending on who you're up against. It's like that whole Bruce Lee, Jeet Kune Do thing. You've got to swap your game. I love it. So many people are like, Adam, pff, Adam hates direct game. And there are so many other people that are like, Adam had the first direct game video ever out on YouTube. And then other people are like, oh, Adam, all social circle stuff. And other people, Adam does day game. Now, Adam does night game. Adam does the only dance floor game video that is actually shown in fit. Adam, everyone's got all this stuff. Dude, I do all of it. I don't specialize in any one thing. I got the whole lot down. I got a whole bunch of stuff that I've never even released because it's dodgy stuff that works really well that people shouldn't know about. Like, and that's the point, right? There's a whole bunch. I became good at everything and I swap. If I'm talking to one guy, I switch to another. But like I said, that's hard for me to teach until now. I can, I've now got a model, a, a proper personality model you guys can take and use. We'll talk about that in a second, about how you can specifically use that with the girls. So what you need to do is start building up the profile. You want a specific type of girl, stay as you are. Get that type of girl. You want a another type of girl, shift into that. You want all of them, adopt every single quality. So let's analyze them now. The leader. He makes decisions, but his decisions are made to benefit others. For the social group, he's being social. He's not just a leader, he's being social. He's interacting with other people. He's leading and making decisions that the group agree with, and the group includes the women that he's trying to pick up. If I make a decision, hey guys, uh, we should all go out to Games Workshop and paint some miniatures, I'm probably a strong enough leader to make girls follow me to that. In fact, I know I am because I've done it before. But the point is, that isn't really a good leadership decision. If I want to really gain bonus points, I would turn around to the girls and be like, hey, I think there's a really good sale on at Nordstrom Rack. Let's go and pick up some cheap Christian Louboutins. And then the women are going to love me. Yeah? I'm making a leadership decision that benefits them. It's an attractive quality, but I'm not being bossy. I'm not forcing them into it. Next up, I'm a nice guy. I care about the girl. I want to make sure she's OK. I want to make sure that she's having a good time, that she's fun, that she's, she's looked after. I want to make sure she doesn't get hurt. I definitely don't want to be the one to hurt her. I have this awesome skill that I've developed in game. It's the coolest thing ever that I can't translate to you guys, and I wish I could. I catch people. I'm really good at it. Somehow, I know where it came from, I learned this ability to spot a girl who's about to fall, and I can catch her. I'll give you an example. On a recent boot camp that I was doing in Seattle, I was walking down the road, this girl just trips up in front of me, bang, and I catch her. And I caught the feel of her breast at the same time. I didn't mean to do that, but it happened as a side effect. And her husband thanked me for catching her, and I thought, wow, that's really weird. I caught the feel of your wife's breast, and you thanked me. But that's irrelevant. The point is, I caught the girl. My wife tripped up this morning. I caught her. I'm really good at this, right? I just, I catch people. That's a nice guy thing to do. You catch people, you help people out. And I've got this thing, like, we, we get on a plane, and people are struggling to put their bags up in the cargo, or up in the, the, the rafters up there, and, and I help them, I do that, because I'm a nice guy. I don't think, wow, that makes me look needy, and now my wife's going to leave me for a guy that tells her he's going to fuck her up the bum. I don't, I, don't, I don't worry about that. I'm not like, oh, that's going to happen. Fuck that, that doesn't make sense. No, I, I'm, I'm a nice guy, I help out. But I'm not needy. I'm not like, oh my god, I need to follow my wife around everywhere she goes and do whatever she says, because otherwise she might leave me. I, I'm not like that. I'm not a needy nice guy, I'm just a nice guy. I help people out. I help you out, you help me out. You screw me over, I screw you over back. It's simple. I'm a bad boy. But where does the bad boy thing come in? The bad boy thing comes in because I make reckless, crazy choices. I do. I'll be sitting around one day and I'll be like, uh, you know what? Fuck this. Let's all just go out and eat dessert. And let's get four desserts each. Now, some of you might be like, that's not really a bad boy thing to do. But if you're hanging around Dream, you know that's a really bad boy thing to do. And I made him do that last night. I took him out. He had four desserts. I made, I made him. I forced him. I was like, you're going to do this. That's a crazy bad boy thing to do. It's like, screw the diet. Let's just do this. It's a bad boy thing to do. It fits the criteria. Yeah, I'm not like jumping on a motorbike and, you know, spraying mud in people's faces. But like, that's a bad boy thing to do, man. That's a, that's a crazy kind of thing. Like, I, I do make reckless decisions. Randomly yesterday, this is, I can't believe I'm going to admit this, but I got in a fight in a public restroom. <laughs> Randomly. Some dude started insulting me, and I was like, no, fuck you, dude. And I'm I've got my penis out, and I'm, fight I'm arguing with this guy. It was the weirdest thing ever. We got in a fight in the restroom. Uh, but, like, but I'm a bad boy. I'm not going to back down. I don't have a problem in, in being emotionally reckless. 
but I don't treat people badly. I don't sort of like hurt people. I don't go out of my way to make them feel bad. I try and help everybody. That's the kind of guy I am. I'm a nice guy that makes crazy, reckless decisions. I've got, I've got this amazing emotion. I'll, I'll phone some up and be like, ah, and scream at you, and then I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. But that's who I am. I'm a bad boy as well. I've got all those qualities. But you know what else I do? I clean my teeth. Yeah? I wash. I've got good hygiene. I look after myself. Someone said to me once, they said, Adam, do you have to be attractive, like physically attractive, to pick up chicks? I was like, no. Well, you don't have to be good looking. But you have to look good. You've got to do your hair. You've got to make sure your clothes are ironed. That you've got to do. If you're someone that's just like, huh, I shouldn't have to get dressed up for a girl, then expect to get a girl that isn't dressed up for you. Yeah? Most of the time, the difference between a girl who looks like a 6 out of 10 and the difference between a girl who looks like an 8 out of 10 is hair and makeup. It's does she spend an hour in front of the mirror making sure she looks good. She does that if you're in a relationship with her, she does it for you. If you're not in a relationship with her, but she's single, she's doing it to meet someone like you. But if you don't put that same effort in, if you don't put the effort in in front of the mirror to do something, use some lotion, you know, don't have dry flaky skin. I have so many people, I've got a dry flaky skin, I think girls don't like me for it. Do you use moisturizer? Uh, no, I don't want to be gay. Like, okay, you can be not gay with flaky skin, so no girl will touch you because she's worried that your flakes of skin might rub off on her face when she kisses you, and I will have a lotion face and be with a woman. You will be single alone masturbating with your flaky face. I will have my lotion and a girl. Okay, I'm gay. Like, you see what I'm saying, yeah? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense, yeah? So that's my point. You guys, work in your hygiene. Like, think about it. Make it, take the time to look good. Do the best with what you've got. If, if you're unfortunate and, you know, God only gave you one arm, it doesn't matter. You can get around that. No one's going to penalize you. Some of the best guys I know are picking up chicks. I actually know this guy is disabled. He really only has one arm. And he has no problem with girls whatsoever. Yeah? It, it doesn't matter. That, that's somebody who physically has an issue with looking good. You guys, none of you have a problem. None of you. Work out. Go down the gym. I have to. The amount of desserts I eat, I have to work out. I'm, I'm not getting a really big body or a really good body. I just have to compensate for the desserts that I eat. So I work out three or four times a week. And you'll know if I haven't worked out for a week, because you'll see videos of me and I'm like this. And like, that's what happens. So you guys, but you have to put the effort in to make sure it's okay. You've got to do your hair. You've got to do it. You've got to iron your shirts. Girls notice that kind of stuff because they put the effort in. Humor. I had a student, he said to me, I don't know what to do about getting good with women. I've tried everything. And he came along in a boot camp and I got him a date with a girl. I was very proud of this. No, no one else had ever got this guy results. I got him a date with a girl and I was very happy about it. And I told him, listen, I was like, I don't think this boot camp's done you enough justice. He's like, I've got a girlfriend. Like, I've, I was like, you don't have a girlfriend, you've got a date, dude. I was like, you're happy, I'm not. Because I don't think you can duplicate these results yet. So I was like, here is the deal. I'm going to give you a free boot camp because I want you to do the process again. Now you understand it's possible for you. Because he went through the boot camp not believing it worked. And it was only at the end when it worked that he suddenly looked back and went, fuck, I didn't listen to anything because I was too busy arguing because I didn't believe it worked. So I gave the guy a free boot camp and he's coming back and he's going to train with me on one condition. And that condition was that he went and did comedy classes because he's not funny. He's a really serious, aggressive guy that disagrees with people. I was like, man, you need to do comedy classes. And comedy classes are cheap, guys. You can find them for like 20 bucks a lesson, and you can do a course of like eight lessons. It is nothing compared to the kind of money that we spend on pickup. Do a comedy class. Learn what's funny and what isn't. Learn how to be humorous. Learn how to go out there and make people laugh. That's going to counteract that other negative quality. Through a mixture of lotion, deodorant, cleaning teeth, and going to comedy classes, if you're somebody that doesn't think you're very funny, you can develop a lot of a very good skill set that stops you being unattractive. The neediness thing and all the other stuff, you guys already got that covered. You've read enough pickup stuff to know about that. But develop these qualities that make somebody attractive. Guys, this is the real shit. This isn't stuff that I've just made up. I, I don't like stealing credit from, from other people. I'm, I'm giving it where it's due. These are real psychologists. They really did create this stuff and it really does work. I told you, I've tested it myself, I've seen it, and I've seen all you guys, as I've been talking to you, nodding and realizing how it relates to relationships that you have been through in your own life.
Now, I'm not going to keep you guys much longer because I know um, you've got a lunch break and I don't want to eat into it. So, guys, to sum up, calibration is all about understanding what is going on in the situation. There is nothing wrong with using scripted lines, but just be prepared to change them. Shift if the girl is wanting to do something different. Alter them if she doesn't look like she's responding to it. Change your game. Don't just follow someone that's like, yeah, do this, this definitely works. They are lying to you. Every girl is different. You have to make sure that your interaction relates to the girl. You now have a model to use. I'm going to throw something out there. Up until now, the cube has been the thing to use. Go online. In fact, I'm going to try and put it up on my website. But go online and get hold of the PEN model personality test. Work out a rough version of it. Make it yourself. Just summarize it into 10 questions. And then get the girl to answer the questions. Tell her it's going to tell her a lot about her insight into who she is. Sit down and calculate the personality type of the girl in front of her. She'll think it's awesome. You're doing a psychological cold read thing. It's, anyone who's a pickup guru, you should love that crap, right? But for you, it's going to tell you what kind of girl she is. It's going to tell you the kind of game she's going to respond to. If you work out, it, you don't have to do it verbally. You can make it a fun routine, or you can just keep it in your head. That's how I do it. I just do it in my head. I analyze what kind of girl she is. And if I work out that the girl is a complete crazy psychotic, then I'm going to be a bad boy. And if I work out that the girl is, her life isn't so great, she's in a bit of a dead-end job, she still works in retail at the age of 26, then I'm going to make sure I'm a nice guy and I'm going to show her some cool stuff and take her out and around. And if I find out she's an extrovert that wants to go out and have fun, then I'm going to make sure that everything going on in my life is awesome and that we're going out there and doing this. Guys, I want to change you. If you want the kind of results that I got, if you want to be looking at yourself and thinking, wow, I am not with the kind of girl I should be with. If you want that, then you're going to have to change. You're going to have to do something different. Rehashed old material, don't cut it. You're going to have to change for the different types of girls. Experience will help with calibration. Up till now, that's probably how you've been told. Oh yeah, if you just uh, keep uh, going out there over time, calibration will happen. You now know what calibration is. React to the people you are talking to. Use it to alter the way you're interacting with them and make sure that you're putting yourself across in the best light. You have to worry about game. You have to worry about value and proving that you're great because you already know the exact kind of guy she wants to be with and now you know how to be him. Thank you. Okay. To make Peter run as much as we can, we have some questions. So any of you that have any questions, raise your hand. Um, so I'd start with this guy at the back and then this guy afterwards. So go. I really liked your speech on the personality types. Thank um, you. And actually, that's one of the things you talked about that's been killing me in my relationships. I was recently engaged, and I always go for the really social girl. Yeah. Get in the relationship, and then time after time, she converts to this stay at home, take care of everything, not go out. And I've tried everything. I've had this problem for years. It seems to kill my relationships a year or two down the road. How do I work on changing that, or is that just something I'm shit out of luck? Now, there's a, there's a number of ways to do it. Actually, we can, use, um, we can use some of the stuff I was talking about last year in terms of framing to sort of make sure it goes one way. First of all, you've got a girl, you meet her and she's an extrovert, just for, for, for every, you meet her, she's an extrovert, and then the minute you get in a relationship, she shifts into an erotic, and she sort of, yeah. And the reason that she turns into an erotic is because she thinks she's settled, she thinks she doesn't have to go out and socialize anymore. You've got to keep that alive in her. So one, you can start by pre-framing everything, and you can start by saying and predicting what's going to happen and explaining how you don't like that. And you can say, I've had a whole bunch of relationships, and the minute you get there, they turn into these quiet homebodies that don't do anything. Now, the next thing, this is a bit controversial, I'm going to suggest you're probably half helping that. If you're allowing her to sit indoors and stay behind, you're party to the cause. I tried dragging her, drag her out, but it ended up like she's making up my friends. Okay. Instead of... Instead of going out, yeah, so in that case, what you might want to do is do something really extreme. So maybe go, for like a, go to like a holiday vacation. Go somewhere completely new where you don't know anybody, and you guys have to go out and interact. Or make it so that you're, the other way of doing it is make it so your life is constantly out socially interacting, and her only option to be with you is to come out and socially interact. If you've been dating a girl for two years, and the only way that she really gets to spend time with you is out and about, then she's going to learn very quickly that that's who you are. State it. This is who I am. 
and say most girls can't keep up with you. This is going to filter out a lot of women. A lot of women are going to be like, well, fuck you, we never spend any time together. You're going to lose all them. But that's good, because all those girls that you lose would have switched to neurotics. The girl that can keep up with you and hack it, that's the one. So you, it, it sounds to me, you're, you're like me, you were looking for a specific type of girl, and that's what I did. I filtered out a lot of girls to be able to get the kind of one I wanted to be with. So it sucks, because you're not going to have the volume that you want, but you know, I'm sure you have a whole bunch of random psychotics while it's going. And then you know, when it gets to that point, then you'll know she's the one. So yeah, it sucks. I, it does happen. And, and that's the stuff I'm saying, guys. Like I said, you, you look back over your relationships, you'll see this fits so often. It's the real shit. OK, go for it. Um, I, don't, I don't really know what the, the study was looking at, but have you found any difference between what a girl's looking for in like a one night stand or something versus, uh, versus a long-term relationship? Um, the study didn't go into that. So, and I, I've got a really big thing. I won't teach on something that I specifically don't know. This particular study didn't go into that. From my own experience on these kind of things, the kind of girls that are up for, it all depends. I'm against one night stands in general, OK? I'm against them, and I'll explain this for, for everybody. One night stands, um, the sex is never as good as if you've had a girl for multiple times. Um, the effort you put in for one night of sex doesn't translate when you could be getting multiple sex with the same girl in an open relationship. So whenever I get a girl, I actually look more for open relationships rather than one night stands. So again, if you're looking for one night stands, there are experts, and I would probably say sin, someone like that to go to for that kind of stuff. If you're looking for getting a girl on the same night and having multiple long-term relationships, that's much more what I'm about. And in that kind of situation, it actually doesn't really matter what type of girl she is. A neurotic will accept that to not get any of the negative parts of a relationship. A psychotic will accept it because she's insane. And the, um, the extrovert will accept it because it's fun and it's casual. So all of them will accept that. So that's much more my preferred kind of thing. Cool. Next up. Yeah. Is there, was there in the study any kind of uh, percentages on the distribution of women? About which ones they kind of go to. You're right, not, right. not in the, what I read. That doesn't mean that it wasn't. Just I, Honestly, like I found a whole paper on a whole bunch of stuff, and this was in there, and I pulled it out. I haven't got hold of the actual physical study itself yet. Um, I'm, like I said, I was more interested in the other stuff, and then I started analyzing all the other bits and sort of like going away with it, like with the, the Isenx pen model. I looked more into that. So unfortunately, I don't have that. But I mean, I'm sure it's Googleable. I'm sure you can find it. Yeah. You said that just going out and, and doing a lot of sets or approaching a lot of girls isn't going to you know, change your personality. I'm curious when you're talking about these different personalities, because I started as a nice guy, but my real personality is a leader. How do you develop, how did you develop these different personalities, like it's things a, that you did? It's a very good did? question. I suppose what I was saying earlier, if you just go out and do the same thing, it doesn't matter how many sets you do, you're going to get the same result. The thing that I did that was different is every time I did something, I would then change it up and swap it. And I suppose that's what I was really trying to say. Um, Going out there and doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. And that's like the definition of insanity, is to do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Yeah? Um, the, the real key to it is to make sure every time you go out, you alter it a bit. And that's actually like my game is very, like I said, it's very fluid. It's kind of like all the different mixtures of stuff. And the way it developed was if I had a certain type of girl, I would do one thing, another type of girl, another thing. And that's because I was always like, oh, that didn't work. I'll change it. And I will often change mid-game. So I'll be talking to the girl rather than going, oh, that didn't work. I'll be like, this isn't working, so I'm going to change it. And so I developed this very fluid construct in my head. And I tried to write it down for some of my friends recently to show the difference in the two models. My model is unteachable. It's, it is literally like memes in my head that just fire each other off, where, which is, it just doesn't help anyone else. But this model is a very um, simplified version that's a lot easier for people to grasp. In my head, there's probably thousands of categories. But you know, in real life, there's three. Makes it easier. Cool. One more question, last one. And then there's a tornado coming or something. Yeah. OK. Or, or, or round it up, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, um, when you said you want to be a leader yes. and do things that other people want to do, mm -hmm. I, I find that really, very uh, cool. But on my uh, situation, is like I'm in college, and a lot of my friends every single night want to play beer pong and drink and get like really messed up, and I don't like to drink that much. And when I try to do things that aren't drinking related, they usually don't follow. So what would you, and I usually don't have as much fun like when we play beer pong and do all those things. So what would you suggest? It's a very good point, get new friends. Sucks ass, and I'm, I'm so serious about that. Because the point is, when you're leading, you always want to make sure you're leading people to do things that, that everybody's going to enjoy. And if you're doing something that you're not enjoying, and you're bringing them to do things that they're not enjoying, it ain't going to work. So find something you really do enjoy doing, and get a whole big group. I'm not saying don't be friends with them, but I'm saying find a whole group that enjoy doing that, and they can all be female. Um, we, we have a whole point um, on our course about stuff that people can do um, to sort of like build up social circles that are specifically tailored to doing certain types of things. And that's really what you want to be doing. Uh, I don't know anything about you, so as a rough thing, let's just assume that for the sake of argument, you really like hip-hop dancing. I'm going to throw it out there. Maybe you do, right? And then you could join a gym, 
join a hip hop dance class and you'll meet a whole bunch of people that love hip hop dancing and they're your new friends. And then you can be like, hey, let's all go to a hip hop club and do hip hop dancing and they're all gonna go with you and it'll be so much fun and they'll really enjoy it. Then you can talk to your friends and be like, hey, I'm going out hip hop dancing, do you guys wanna come? If they wanna come, they'll come, if they don't, they won't. But either way, you know that you've got a group that really enjoy that. Uh, one, one final thing actually, um, this is probably the most important thing for all of you guys. Um, as always, like I said, I said at the very beginning, I'm not here on a, on a business thing. I'm really not here to, to sell you guys anything and I have nothing for sale. Instead, I convinced Gambler, the owner of PUA Training, to put up a whole bunch of free content. It's up at puatraining.com forward slash under 21. You guys can just go there and get that. There'll be a whole bunch of stuff um, related to all the different stuff we teach and I'm gonna try and make sure there's some stuff based on this for a bit further. That's completely up for you guys. Um, like I said, it's, this shouldn't be about spending money. You guys should be able, to be able to get stuff completely for free, put it into practice and get good. And then if you wanna spend money, Obviously you can. Adam, where can they find out more about you? Um, yeah, if anyone, PUA Training's the best. If anybody wants any more information about me, puatraining.com has a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, YouTube, I've got a whole bunch of free videos and things like that, but that's, that's probably the best. Guys, thank you ever so much. Awesome, thank you.